Welcome back to 380. This is video two, getting our build drive set up. We've set up a compact drive. It's much shorter than the Shigley example, um, but uh, just to keep it in the screen. We Keep in mind, we can always extend this out uh, at the end just to go to the same size as uh, the book uh, drive. Right now we've got everything set up uh, for the sheaves or the shivs or the female pulleys, however you want to see it. And we're just going to get into modeling the belt here. Let's have a look at our supplied uh, values. There's one key thing here. This, these sheaves are AB combinations, meaning we can do A or B belts into these sheaves. A is smaller than B. Uh, so if we follow along, uh, basically, we're going to start doing a sketch inside of a new component called belt, and we're going to use the standardized shapes. Now, A and B belts are kind of metric, kind of not. So you can hear me moving around inside the book here. Uh, I'm just using Shigley's uh, standard, uh, which is from, I don't know if he says where it's from. I think it's Gates. Could be anybody, really. Uh, they've become standard. So... The B, A and B have a standard. Uh, it's measured in both inch and metric. Uh, you might notice some places, depending on where you go, that it seems to be a bit more metric than imperial, uh, but we're gonna go with the book values which are in imperial or inch. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure you're at the top level. Create a new, another component. We'll call this guy belt. There's no part number, so underscore belt. And I am gonna activate it this time. Where is it? Let's have a look where the origin is. Nice, it's right on top of the standard origin or the top level origin. Don't need to look at it, but I am gonna use this uh, XY plane or YX, XY plane to put a sketch in here. Now I've practiced this. There's some small wrinkles in the small sheave. We're gonna use the big one and then come back and look at what's going on with the small one. I want to use the sheaves to position the belt. So the key, the best thing here is to actually have a look through. So I'm gonna slice this and use the big belt way out here at the far end to control my belt profile sketch. We'll do another sketch for the sweep. Uh, v belts in the basic form are shaped like kind of truncated Vs. They fit into this notch. I'm gonna align it with the middle guy here. So we do need to figure out where uh, this fits and how it fits together. However, we're given some numbers here for a B belt, looking at the book, the top dimension is in inch 21, 30 seconds. It might jump it around because it'll scale away. If you lose it, escape out, of, escape out of there, pull it, pull it. By highlighting the whole thing, you can pull it around. You can see it's not quite symmetrical. Okay, so next is to fix that. So I'm going to snap some line to the middle of each. See if I can get that to go. Yeah, it might not be too happy. Let's leave it there for now. We'll put some height to it first because it's out in space. It doesn't know what to do. Its height here, uh, they call it B in the book, is 7 sixteenths. And then last is the taper angle is 40 degrees. Get that, there we go. Now let's try that constraint again, there we go. And it's in space, it's looking good, but it's not quite, it's not quite what we're after yet. We need to position it against the sheath. The easiest way to do that is with a mm, intersect. Can do the whole face on both sides. Gives us a nice uh, set of points. If you wish, you can go ahead and hide, hide that sheave to see what's going on. Now, out of interest, what is this taper angle here? Is it the same? No. So what's going on here? It's two degrees less. Uh, 
the goal, as far as I can understand from reading around and trying to figure out what's going on, this is actually to wedge the belt in. So it's a little bit different. It's not exactly 40, it actually grips it. So we do have a bit of a problem because where do we put the belt? So the belt tends to stick out a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. Uh, so let's just try uh, putting the belt, it's probably unlikely that this length will be compressed too much. It'll probably be squeezed a bit of the, well, probably a bit of both. For to be at uh, all, what am I trying to, <laughs> what am I saying here? For all of us to get the same answer, let's all do the same thing. Let's put the corners on this line here and see what that gives us. Sticks out a little bit, but we can see we've got quite a bit of kind of wedging here. It should stick out a little bit. It's probably not bad. The other option, let's do that again, is to go for the top edge. Oh. Trying to get that selected. So it's sticking out a little bit here. This could be before tension. I don't know. I'm going to go for it being pushed right in. So let's, let's do what we did first. So, sorry. I'm going to go for this lower corner stuck in to the notch of the belt. Now, while we're at this, what if we decide well, where does an A belt fit? We can just do a little test here. So if we go with the the other style, A is only a half across the top and it's thickness, which is the kind of top to bottom here is 11, 30 seconds. So that's the A position ish for this setup. So this sheave can in fact take A and B, but A is going to be quite a bit in there, quite deep in the sheave. So we're going to stick with B just on doing twice there. So there's our B profile and we're happy with that. Keep it in mind, it's not an exact fit, and this seems to be on purpose from what I can understand. This wedges the belt into the sheave. There's only one. We're gonna do a pattern later for that. So let's leave that as is and finish the sketch. We'll call that our, and we have sketches in here because we've got our belt active. We'll call that our belt profile. Next, we're going to do another sketch at this level. So making sure belt is still active. Go ahead here and use the ZY or YZ plane, do another sketch. This one's a little easier. We don't even need to see these two other components. We only need this sketch. So let's project that far point over first and do two circles. This one's going to be 7.4 or better known as well, we wrote it down already, little d, nice. Can press enter to that. Nope, that's little d, d. Oh man, let's try to capitalize it. Careful, there we go, 7.4. My other circle is big D, nice. Just be a little careful of that there. You should see 7.4 and 11. Let's make sure we've got that right. There's our pitch. There's a pitch, nice. Let's look at that. I need a path for my sweep that's coming. If I click and drag, you'll notice it gives me a tangency. I'm gonna undo that again. So using the line tool, snap onto the edge, click and drag. If I'm careful, I can go over and get the same on the other side. Nice, yeah, and the same going the other way two tangencies at each end. I can't click that end because it, it's going to be hard to get this to go all the way as a sweep path. So what I'm going to do is break those inner parts. It'll give me some warnings saying it's doing some stuff. Don't care too much. Highlight those guys, turn them to construction. Perfect. Now when I click full length, I can use that as a sweep path for sure. Fully constrained, nice. Finish the sketch, call it something like uh, belt sweep path. Let's 
clear what's coming next. Let's make a belt. Now notice, and this is Fusion's one of Fusion strengths here, we've got a profile. It's not touching the belt profile or the sweep profile. That'll be fine. So we can move this around as long as it's per uh, perpendicular to the sweep path, it'll be fine. So next sweep, solid sweep. First, it's just a single path. So let's pick our profile path. And if you've got tangent chain, chain select turned on, it'll just do the whole thing and then you're done, easy. Let's turn on our components, have a look. Yeah, nice, sticks out a little bit. Can't really see what's going on here. So let's go ahead here and add a inspect section analysis. I'm gonna pick that plane, which is the X, Y at the top level. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, it's a little overlapping. That's okay, because it's we're not modeling it as actually running, but as shipped, for example. So make sure that you've got a little bit of overlap with the right spot. See here, it's not perfect here either, right? So it's gonna be jumping around in here. That's okay, right? So we're not too bothered exactly how the belt sticks in here. However, we only have one belt. That's not right. Make sure your belt component is active. Go for pattern, pattern. Uh, it's up to you how you do this, but I'm gonna go for rectangular. Gonna components. Yeah, I want to do a component because I want this belt to be repeated. So this belt component is gonna be repeated and I'll have three belt components. I'll see belt one, two, three. So pick the belt. Yeah, there it is. If I click it again, it'll unselect and then reselect. So let's make sure it's there. And axis. You can usually pick uh, something that's around. I've just picked that original sketch. Let's see which we've got here. Let's start pulling stuff. So this direction, I don't want three, I want one. The, it, it itself, you can change this to zero as well if you wish. Just keep in mind what's going on here. So, sorry, got the wrong one there. Three, let's just put one. That looks good. So it's, uh, there we go. Three all together. And again, if you start pulling, you'll be able to see what you're getting. I'm doing this with the analysis turned on, which makes me, makes this ghost out. The other axis, I just want one, and I can say distance zero. Now, direction wise, I wanna go symmetric. What this will do is repeat the whole thing. Now, now that I'm doing this, I don't like this sketch being repeated. Maybe I'm gonna put all the belts in one pass. So let's change it from components to bodies. Pick the body. Let's do that again with bodies. Is it working? No, let's get in here, get the body. There we go. So and I just have one sketch. This is probably a little more obvious to see. We only have one component, but it will be three belts inside of one component. Sorry, just go with the flow. Uh, I'm gonna go symmetric three. So now if I increase, say three, five, seven, it just keeps going. I'm gonna change extent to spacing. There, that's what we want. So there's our behavior. So I only need three. I'm not sure that distance yet. So I'm gonna set it up and go into the parameters. So distance, I'm gonna change this to one point one one one, so I can find it. Say, okay. That looks good. Now let's measure. I'm gonna hide my belts here. So, and I can go to the top level. So let's go for uh, measurement, distance between these two guys is three quarter inch. Let's check the other one. Three quarter inch. So 
click that once, I believe, to get it. Change my parameters, look for that 1.111. There's the pattern. Paste in. Nice. Press tab. No, we don't have it shown. There's all the bodies. There we are. And, oh, get all those guys. <laughs> Be helpful if I showed it. There it is. That looks right. Looks good. Everything's happy. You can hide this sketch. It's just getting in the way. There we go. There's our belt modeled. Let's check one th one thing here. We can uh, keep in mind our old value here for Orlov is was the old uh belt length let's check that here see if it still works so change our belt here from yeah, just hunting through the book for this example uh his old length was 113.8 tab there we go so that works well nicely so the one we're going for is uh 61.8 Perfect. That works like a charm. Get rid of the origin. What origin is this? Highlights all the way through the browser. There we go. That's our second video done. Our next video is going to be how to animate this guy. Uh, make a video from it eventually. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next, I hope, three of three videos.